Very quickly, I will just go through the other slides, which were for Zephyr and MicroPython. Uh, we won't have time to actually do it uh, in the same way we did the previous one, but I just wanted you to, I, to know how it is uh, and give you a quick introduction of it. So Zephyr is an operating system for, for constrained, constrained devices. Uh, it supports multiple platforms and it, it is optimized for, for this kind of devices. Uh, it's open source, and you can see a lot of more information on zephyrproject.org. Uh, you already have these slides, so you can check it later if you want. In this specific hands-on, uh, we provide similar to the SDK. It's exactly the same, so once you run the SDK, everything, <coughs> everything you do here should be smoothly. So first, you have to initialize the repository and configure it. That is already done on your virtual machines. Then you have to check out this branch with this command. Again, all these commands will be available uh, in are available in this document. You have to clone a MicroPython repo, make um, a very slight modification on the make file, and you can build the Zephyr applications and then build a MicroPython application on top of Zephyr. Uh, and then and everything, all, all of this is going to be done using the terminal, but you can also generate an Eclipse, Eclipse project uh, and load the application similar to what we did with uh, projects from the NXP SDK, but also for the projects for, for Zephyr. So the same procedure that, that we did using the NXP SDK, well, the Vegaboard SDK, um, something similar is done here, but using the Zephyr tools. So instead of all what did, we did there, well, all this is already on, on your virtual, virtual machine. In case you are going to import Zephyr on, on your Linux host from scratch, you have to follow these steps and configure that environment variable. So once you have it, you just have to check out the branch, install the requirements with the, with the script, it's very easy, set up the environment variables uh, with all these commands. And there is also a hello, a hello world. In this case, uh, I run a blinky, a blinky demo instead of the hello world so that you don't require to, to connect using the serial terminal. So you just you will just see the LED blinking. And the, and the commands are basically the same. In this case, with Zephyr, we have this tool called West. This tool is used to, to be a little more friendly with the procedure of, of flashing the device. So instead of running the open OCD uh, server and then connect to the GDB. Through GDB, you just have to put West Flash and indicate the path of the, of the tool chain, in this case, open OCD, and that's it. That's all you need, and, it, and the LED will start blinking. So if you have time, you can follow this, actually, it, it's just this, uh, these steps, and that's it. That's all you need to, to run the, the LED, blinky LED. And to, to run MicroPython, it's also very easy. These, these first steps at the beginning are already part of your virtual machine image, so you just have to do this modification to the make file, make it, and program it using the West Flash tool, similar to the Blinky demo. And you will see this, you will see how in your terminal, the MicroPython being run, executed. Similar to when you run Python on your, on your computer, you will see it listed here in the, in the terminal. And in the end, there are sort of some commands that you can execute in this MicroPython for example, import machine, a pin, 
and that pin will be assigned to an LED variable and you can modify the LED variable value with, with these commands. And also there is a while, a while loop for you to, to give it a try. So it's also, as you can see, it's also one slide of, of commands. It shouldn't take you more than, I don't know, five minutes. If you already had the setup from the previous one, this is going to be extremely fast or faster than, than the other one. And finally, to run Eclipse using Zephyr, there are, these are the instructions. The, the projects are not, are not already created like the Vega board SDK projects. In here, you have to first create the project files. And those project files are the ones that are going to be imported in the, in the Zephyr workspace, in the e Eclipse workspace. And, and then you can just build and, and program similar to what you have already done. There, there are going to be some missing configuration on the debug configurations, but you can, you can see what to put there in here. There are three, thing, three things that you need to get, take care of. Where is the open OCD? Where is the config options? And where is the GDB client? So all of these are in the, in the debug configurations from, from this Zephyr project that you will generate using these steps. So it's not, it's, I mean, the first things, the first setup, the, the environment that you generated for the Vega board uh, helped you a lot on all the things that you need to have ready for, for the Zephyr environment. So it should be much, much faster for you to, to run these other steps. So if you have time, Give it a try, and I will be again around to, to help you if you have any questions. I'll leave this, this path in case somebody else is still, is still trying to, to work on the BLE uh, demo. But the Vega slide, the Zephyr slide, you already have them, so you can uh, copy and paste it similar to what you, we did with the Hello World on on the, the Vega board. Okay, I'll be around, thank you.